fans, all of you, all of you Phantom fans that want to say goodbye to Phantom of the Opera in the coolest possible way, Empowered Voices has created a fantasy weekend, which I'm calling Phantom Con because it's Phantom Con. And it is for everyone who loves Phantom of the Opera. It's not just for people who are singers. It's not a singing camp. It is for fans. Cosplay, questions and answers with cast members, lip syncs with cast members. You ever wanted to sing All I Ask of You with Raul? This is your moment. You want to sing Point of No Return with Christine? This is your moment. There's going to be questions and answers with crew members. Maybe you're interested in being a dresser like me. There's going to be a lesson with our production makeup supervisor. And did I mention we're wearing costumes? I'm going to wear a costume. Come hang out with us. I want to see all of you. Hello. It's me, Kevin Von Esper. Welcome to Found a Phantom. Have you ever not known you needed something until you got it? That's how I feel about this. Live from the Garnier. Look at my new background. Isn't it beautiful? I can just live in this opera house now. Yes, practical, practical effects here. Today's gonna be an awesome episode. We have someone who has to go to Broadway tonight to dress Carlotta. It's Rory James. We're gonna talk all about Phantom Con and cosplay and working on Broadway. I think we should just get to it. Are you guys ready for Found a Phantom? Are you ready? Found a Phantom, Found a Phantom. Hello, Rory. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited to be here. I mean, you yes. look so fantastic with Whoa. your masquerade stairs backdrop. I know. Can you believe it? It's I mean, so fancy. I'm obsessed. I I just I wake up every day and I look over here and I'm just like it's like I'm living at the opera house. There Not so much People underground, but like house. on the ground level. Well, sure. I think this this is technically maybe like level three or something like that. It was a long. I've been, but it's been quite a long You've time. Been? I don't remember. Yeah, oh, it was man. Years ago. It's like one of my dreams to go there. I would so, love to go back and see it again because it's yeah. so beautiful. So you could go multiple times and experience oh, sure. it again and again. I'm sure every time you'll see something new too. It's right. I'd love those, to go back in a so costume. That's kind of my dream. Bring me, I will bring, I will take my camera. We can take some pictures. Yes. Okay. We're going to France. Yes. It's a great plan. You heard it here first. <laughs> Thank you. That's the end of the show. I'll see you next week. No, just kidding. We have to go pack. Yes. We're going to France. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm going to pack my whole phantom layer into a suitcase. <laughs> and then I'll wear some of your costumes. How about that? Oh, it'll be fantastic. Yeah. It's fantastic. Fantastic yes. with a P. Always, we don't use the letter F in the fancy no, world. That's Everything right. is PH. Oh man, that must get annoying, huh? Every <laughs> note, like it's actually kind of fun. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I want to go all the way back. I want to know a little bit about you. From my little bit of research on you, it seems like you were a fan a long time before you started working at the show. Is this correct? Yeah. So I have been working in theater as a dresser for a give or take 10 years, kind of rounding it off. Mm -hmm. And I've always loved the costumes from Phantom of the Opera. That was their, the, they're the best costumes on yeah. Broadway. They really are. Anyone who's a costume nerd loves those costumes. Um, Maria Bjornsson was the designer of Phantom of the Opera and she mm. just did. R.I.P. Uh, yes a stunning job with the costume design and the set design and there just isn't anything else like it so as a person who loves costumes for years i loved these costumes and had i've had a blast recreating them and just studying them and when i realized that my journey as a dresser was going to take me to new york that it was of course on the list of things i wanted to do i wanted to work at phantom of, along with other shows i had on my list of things i wanted to do but this was number one, right? 
<laughs> I really wanted to. I, always, I have like a little dream list of things I wanted to do as a dresser. And of course, dressing at Phantom, touching any of those Marie Beyonson costumes was very much on my list. And I had gotten a job at the Met Opera. So I was working at the Met. And for some reason, I remember I was on a 15 minute break. <laughs> we were teching a show and I went to get a Starbucks and I was walking back. And I remember I thought, you know what? I should start sending out some resumes to some of the Broadway shows and see if anyone needs a swing. And I thought, all right, well, I'll send you know five out. And I thought I should send one to Phantom. They, they might, I just felt like they might need me. I just felt like there was this moment. I was like, well, maybe they need me. And I sent it out that evening and they called me the next day. And wow. they were like, hey, we need someone. It was like serendipity, this perfect moment. They needed me. My resume showed up and they were like, we think you're the right person for this. You know, we have an emergency. And they basically haven't let me leave since then. So I've gotten very lucky. The stars kind of aligned in that moment. I had this little like universe nudge of like, I think they might need you send in that resume. And I got very lucky that I was able to say, yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. So it was, it was quick, but very fun. Wait, I got a video for that. What do you do around here? Like, what would you say that your job is? Uh, a little bit of everything. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. I remember when I found that audio clip on Instagram. I was like, mm. oh, that's me. Do you know what that's from? The original source of that? I don't know. Do you know? No, I have no idea. I have no idea. I just, it, it popped up and I went, oh my gosh, that's who I am at the show. So I started what they uh, like technically brought me in for. I was dressing Pianji. That was the first track mm. I ever dressed. So the first phantom costume I ever touched was Pianji's Hannibal costume. So I Which is the heaviest that. one, right? Is that what and, I learned this week on your phone? Yes, um, people ask me that all the time and I have officially touched everything. And yeah. it is, it's definitely the heaviest thing, partially because it has, there's a cape attached. So the cape right. and the tunic together and they're attached to each other. It's, I don't know how much it weighs. Somebody, we should bring in a scale one day and just measure because oh, yeah. people want to know how much things weigh. For but sure. yeah, so I did, I did Pianji for quite a while. We had someone out on medical leave. And so there was a shift kind of in what people were doing. And so I was covering that track so that dresser could do something else. And it was so fun, but also we were in the middle of COVID. So we had people out all the time and emergencies happen. Mm -hmm. And one day, one of the other dressers came to me and said, are you the kind of person that would be willing to do a track cold? Which for those of us who aren't dressers, don't work in theater, that means they hand you the paper, like the packet of what to do. And they say, have fun. <laughs> we'll help you if we can. And you just kind yeah. of jump into it. This is usually done with the, the, the simpler tracks, right? You don't do this right. to someone on a, a track that's, you know. Really I mean, I just dress. saw the, those index cards. I mean, geez. Yeah. So I is there a actual list of how many characters in the, are in the show or how many costumes there are? I don't know how many costumes or how many characters. We have a cast of about 40, give or take. We have vacation swings floating around. Right. And we have people that are out. So 40, 45-ish is kind of the general number of humans that are the cast members that are there. But they're not uh, all in the show at once, right? Yeah, exactly. So I think the moments that everybody's on stage, like Hannibal, everybody's on stage. Masquerade, Masquerade everybody's yeah. on stage, right? These moments when you see the full cast. And there are 16 dressers and two supervisors. So there's 18 of us and then a stitcher that is there sometimes during the day, more than during the day. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, our team is nearing 20 and there's usually somebody training or something else happening so there's so many people floating around that building it's crazy yeah i have i have a pitch okay i mean not necessarily <laughs> to you i guess more to the universe and to the really useful group because i know if they're closing phantom on broadway it's time for the legacy phase and i have this great idea and i think this all ties into what you're talking about it would be a tv show oh about backstage working at phantom but it would be a comedy it would kind of like be the office like it wouldn't be about phantom it just so happens to be the place right. that you're watching them work and all the shenanigans we have been saying that for as long as i've been there and probably longer than i've worked there, then now then you can do TV something show. with those costumes like they don't have to go into storage or wherever they're supposed <laughs> to go next like use those props they can go to Hollywood and be part of this show. 
what's so funny is that we've always said that, that we're, things happen, like really goofy, silly things. And someone's like, you wouldn't even have to script it. We could just do it as a reality show backstage on Broadway of a show. Like you wouldn't have to script it because Fuck. enough stuff happens. There was enough drama and enough humor and enough just right. fun people that you wouldn't have to script it at all. We could absolutely have a, a TV show back there. And that's I'm sure every a, yeah. Broadway crew would say the exact same thing. I think that's true. Oh, yeah. I'm sure production. you could you could set it anywhere. It's just Phantom is so iconic. It's like for the next generation to soak it in, maybe they need to watch it on TV. Like right. as a part of in a different sure. context. Yeah. No, I, I think it would that's be my pitch. Yeah. It wouldn't even really have to be that scripted. We could just right. use real situations and people would be so entertained. Like Spinal it, Tap. Yeah, right. I mean, there's so much goofy stuff going on back there on a daily basis that people would be thrilled to learn about all of it. And half the time, it's just hilarious. When I walk through, I'm going one change to the next. There's always somebody laughing. There's always something fun happening back there. So yeah. you never know. Well, that's something else I wanted to touch on. Um, I mean, I don't know when this started exactly, but I can tell you when I kind of became aware of it which is people who work on Broadway on social media is kind of like its own little world. And I know I kind of got into it when I went to the 30th anniversary of Phantom. What was this? I guess five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that everyone had an Instagram. I started following this person and that person. And then I see like they're posting funny videos from backstage. And it's just like a whole nother perspective on not only the show and like the costumes and but like the people and kind of through oh my god i mean could you andrew lloyd weber couldn't have even imagined social media when he wrote this show you know what i mean sure and yeah i think i think having social media has really brought something special to the broadway world in general because it does give you the opportunity to see backstage stuff that we mm -hmm. didn't get the chance to see before and it's fun because it gives us a way to connect when we're backstage we're doing our thing that we always do yeah. but i know me you're and just Raquel you're, it's another a, day in the office you know it's just like last coming up with videos and doing and it makes the day go by faster it keeps us entertained during the show so as much fun as everyone has watching them we have just right. as much fun and the ballerinas were working on one the other day i don't know if they've debuted it yet but it's hilarious and so i cannot wait for that one to hit the instagram or the TikTok oh my God. Or where she posts them but uh jolena's been with us she's one of our vacation swing ballerinas and she's been coming up with the greatest ideas so there's a bunch coming from the ballerina side of things it's so much fun to do and it keeps us all entertained we do the same thing eight times a week so yeah, we exactly. need a little bit of entertainment sometimes right well I'll, i'm gonna circle back to that too um <laughs> was it the one there was one that just had me in stitches the other day with the that's that's your man yeah yeah oh my god i don't have it ready to show right now but like that was so funny it's on i think it's I'm on sure you were part of that Instagram right yeah i reposted um, it for sure yeah it's on jolena was the one it was her her brain baby she was the yeah. mastermind and then she got raquel and carl involved and i was editing and directing and was, yeah like, i figured you had something to do with that well, she came up with the idea. I just held the phone so that they could do their thing. But, her, but... like everyone's faces just make it, you know, well, especially they're hers. actors. So it's so much yeah. fun to make these videos with them because right. they don't have to try very hard to just be hilarious, right? Like you're like, hey, this is what you're doing. And they go all in almost And the instantly. costumes are already larger than life. Like those are right. kind of out of context. Those are just hilarious to look at too. You know, yeah. when it's not on stage, you kind of look ridiculous in that stuff. Yeah, we're so used to it. It becomes so commonplace <laughs> exactly. to us. But every once in a while, I'll stop somebody and be like, look in the mirror. This is your job. I know. Exactly. Like when the Carlottas are holding the, um, it's like the umbrella and the, the scarf with the hat and the whole thing. They're just so dressed up. And I'm it's like, so look in the dramatic. mirror. Yeah. <laughs> do you see what I see? Because you look like this is not normal. Normal people don't do this for a living. Yeah. Well, the last thing I wanted to say about the social media thought was... You know, I went to see it uh, a couple times recently, and in the past, it was like I didn't know who I was watching. You know, they really disappeared into the characters. This time, it was kind of interesting because I knew all these people 
their personalities from watching them on social media, but I don't get to see the show like very, you know, until recently, probably once every couple of years. So I'm actually seeing them do the work, but I'm like, oh, that's Chris Giorgetti. Like, that's yeah. awesome, you know? I think it's really fun. I got a message from a woman who had been watching mine and Raquel's silly videos backstage with her daughters. They lived in Utah. And mm -hmm. after watching them for a couple of months, they were like, we have to go see this show. Right. And so she sent me a message from the house. They were sitting in the house. They brought my daughters from Utah and they were sitting there and she said, and my daughters were watching Carlotta and paying yeah. attention to Carlotta. And typically that's not always right. what's happening when you're seeing the show for the first time. You're very focused on the Christine and Phantom story and what's going on. And so the fun that there was these two little kids that were just enamored watching Carlotta because they had seen the, the videos backstage. Exactly. And, you know, it was, it's so fun because it makes you realize that there's like 20 different things happening on that stage at all times. Oh my God. Yes, we have yeah. the Phantom Christine story, which is kind of what we're focused on. But I watch from the wings. There's parts I see every night. And I'm like, you guys, there's a whole scene going on back there in the corner that people don't even realize. Yeah. There's so I actually much wanted to happening. touch on that because um, I I had to do this. I bought myself a birthday present this month, uh, last the end of last month. And I went to see Phantom on a Wednesday, front row center, <laughs> which, you know, I've only ever seen it from the mezzanine. The last time yeah. I saw it, I was literally in the last row, you know? And what I noticed most of all was all the scenes like you were talking about happening. Like when you in the back of the room, you see all the characters kind of whispering like during like, you know, the Hannibal Hannibal yeah. rehearsal and everything. But when you're up close, you can hear just enough that they are actually saying stuff to each other. Yes. They are yes, actually they are whispering to each other. And I'm like, you can't exactly hear what they're saying, but you can hear that they're saying it. And now I'm obsessed with what they're all saying and does it change I every night? I have been saying for it's as incredible. long as I've worked there, I want their mics on. I want exactly. you guys to get it because I can hear it and no one else can. And what are they we saying? Get backstage and I'm like, oh, you guys can hear it. Like it's sometimes it's hilarious, but I mean, they're, they're doing the scene. They're in, they're talking to each other. They're having conversations. One of my favorite moments, and I laughed, and I was, I, there's a moment where I'm really, really close to, like, I should, I, but I laughed out loud. Mm. There's a moment in Hannibal, the very, very beginning of the show, Carlotta sings the cadenza, she's got the head and all this, and then um, Pianchi comes out as, you know, Hannibal, and he sings, and then um, Ray runs in, and he's like, no, 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 and he starts yelling at him, and everybody's, you know, mull and then they all just kind of relax and start mulling around and they're mm -hmm. all very much in the scene. And Ray comes up to, it's the same ballerina he comes up to every day. It's part of the track. He comes and talks to this girl, but he doesn't always say the same thing. And it's usually something kind of in the same vein, but one day, usually he's like, stop singing, only dance. No, no singing, just dancing. It's something like this. But one day he was like, let's make a deal. You are going to only dance and I will only sing. That's it. And then walked away. And I laughed louder than I should. It was yeah. just so funny. I'm obsessed because they, with that now. They really are having these conversations and they very much are in the scene. So it's really fun to hear the murmurings of that. And different people yeah. play different characters different ways. So when we have right. swing on, you know, maybe that maybe that character's drunk today. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, or what you know, they play. And that's what's so fun about these wonderful actors is that they do have, a, especially those ensemble bits, right, where there's so many people on stage, they're in the scene, but they really are playing and acting and doing, and that's what makes the show so full and so rich and fun to watch because they're not just, you know, saying their lines and standing there. They really are playing and being in the world. That answers a lot of my questions, but also brings me a lot more. <laughs> um, <laughs> where do I want to go with this? Um, yes, I want to reference a podcast I listened to recently with um oh my god I want to make sure I say everyone's name correctly Madame Jury Marie Johnson Marie Johnson yes yeah. she's our Madame Jury she did um this podcast about cats the wrong cat died and she said something to the effect of you know because the one of the most obvious questions to ask someone in a show is how do you keep it fresh every night you know and she said well with all the variants of what 
could happen or who could be there or who's swinging for who or who's maybe subbing in the orchestra or someone working backstage like every single night is a, is its own unique experience with yeah. those variables and do you feel like that's true and can you absolutely. does that is it as true in the backstage area as it is on stage yes absolutely um we have to remember, especially with COVID, I mean, even in normal life, but especially with COVID and just people being hyper vigilant about illnesses and things like that, we never have the same show two nights in a row. It just doesn't happen. I mean, every night, and that's just thinking about on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, backstage is a whole nother thing. Sure. But people, we have wonderful swings and understudies that are going in and out all the time. You know, somebody might be sick, somebody could be out on vacation, somebody mm -hmm. could be. You know, it, things happen, things move around, it's always shifting. So it's very, very rarely that it's the exact same lineup two nights in a row. That's just right. really rare. And we have things that are scheduled in. Um, we have like our Christine alternates where we have right. a schedule where it's, it's, there is different people. So that, you know, it, we have a rotation. Um, we have dancers that have a rotation that they do. That's their own rotation. The phantoms have a thing they do. So you got it. You have at least a day off, right? Like someone's got to take your place, right? Um, well, so the way that backstage works is kind of similar, right? So we have mm -hmm. swings that can cover right. things. And so if someone needs a day off or someone's sick or someone's out, then a swing covers for them within the wardrobe. They have the same thing in the hair crew. The makeup team has swings, right? So like every aspect of the show is moving and changing every night. So, you know, for a performer, they could see a different dresser and that's a completely different show for them. Yeah. I mean, the costumes mm -hmm. are the same and the changes are the same, but it's a different person that you're talking to a different person that you're seeing it's a different energy to bounce off of to come running back on stage absolutely. from right absolutely or for example um since we were talking about marie as madame jury mm -hmm. her meg madame jury relationship if a different meg is on if a different madame jury is on with a different meg those that combination we have you know there's four or five megs and four or five madame juries there's infinite possibilities and combinations yeah. there that are going to give them a different person to play off of I have multiple Carlottas I dress. My Carlottas are in room, mm -hmm. like there's a rotation. If, if Raquel is out or she's on vacation or doing a concert or something, then I have one of our wonderful understudies and they rotate through them. So I, it's always different. And yeah. you know, that's part of the fun of it is that yes, it's the same show eight times a week, but there's so many people that the rotation and the different mixes is what keeps everybody kind of on their toes. Cause it's a different group than it was last night. Right. Yeah. And it was like last time I saw it, I was kind of excited to see who would be the understudies for that day. Not to any disrespect to the main cast, but it's like, I want to see a different show, you know, and it also ties back to the social media thing. When I saw it, I was like really excited that I got Chris Giorgetti and Polly Baird. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. I get to see them now. So Absolutely. it's a different, you know. I'm sure it's the same for you. Yeah, and that's part of the fun. I think I really enjoy, there's bits of the show, there's <laughs> the way our tracks work, there's bits of the show I watch every night. And right. so it's fun when I get to see a different person do it and they right. bring their own version of that character, right? So maybe it's that person's Carlotta. I The Carlottas are, of course, my kind of main thing at this right. moment. They all do little things different. And I love there's little moments that I like to listen to because they all do um, their little tantrum, as I call it, in Hannibal, when they say, mm. say Ubaldo, and they flip the they flip the fur and they walk mm. off. They all do it just slightly different. And I think that's so fun because their own special interpretation of Carlotta is so unique, but yet so Carlotta. And I find that so much fun. So that's the stuff that keeps us entertained yeah. after so many performances is there any certain characters that you see the most change between person to person or do you think it's equal hmm. i think and there's some fun ones that are not that people may, might not realize and I, I wish that they that we could like put them on display the way different um actors play joseph bouquet Mm. always gives me a laugh because they can do a lot with this character and they have so much fun with him. Ray -A as well. We see a lot of different actors play Ray and it always makes me laugh. I love every single version of Ray. -A. They come up with Carlotta is a, is another one that they can within the character can play and really make her mm. how, you know, into their own ideal version of her. 
and it's it's so much fun so I, I really i pay the most attention to the carlottas i think and i i hear and i notice and I'm behind the bed for Il Muto. So I get to hear the frog when she like croaks like a frog and they all do it differently. And I always get a good laugh out of that. And I wonder if you played the different croaks for me, if I could match my Carlotta. Oh, that'd be a fun game. I wish <laughs> I wish I could do that for you. I feel like that. I, I, like, I bet I could do it because I listen to them every night. <laughs> I was wondering about that croak. It almost seems like it would be damaging to a singer to do that every night. Do you think, or do you think it's, it's, do you know if it's fun for them or if it's just like, oh, I got to croak again tonight? I've never heard anyone complain okay, about the croak, fair. but the one thing I do know, and they're all very skilled at this, they know how to use their voices. And it's really right. spectacular because when you're doing the same show eight times a week, especially when you're singing Carlotta, Carlotta is one of the biggest sings in yeah. that show. She's singing so much and they are really tentative and they have to find this perfect balance where they're still giving the hundred percent show that the audience deserves, but not killing their voice because they have to do it again, maybe in five hours, right. maybe it's yeah. a two show day. So they find ways to do things like the croak where they're not hurting them, so, you know, so they're mm -hmm. they're making the choice for them that still does it justice, but is, you know, a healthy sing because they, they know all that stuff. Yeah, that's good. Let me rewind again. I want to go back to what when was the first time you ever remembered hearing about or being exposed to Phantom of the Opera in any way, shape or form? Um, well. I, I didn't grow up in the theater world necessarily. I grew up in the ballet world. I was, a, as a kiddo, you know, I danced. And that kind of somewhere along the line morphed into me enjoying theater as a, as a viewer of theater. But I always grew up in the costume world. That was the thing I was interested in. I never wanted to be on stage. I'm not a performer. I don't, mm. Lord knows. And when did you start stage. cosplaying? Well, I always did. I think that's the thing, right? So I started with, it was the ballet costumes hanging in the closet that I would twirl around in. And then it was, well, this one doesn't really work for this. So I'm going to cut it up and change it. And I remember the moment when my mom was like, okay, she's got a problem or a gift. I don't know. Um, right. I took my grandma's curtains down. Um, I had like uh -oh. I was at my grandma's house a lot as a kid. And so I had a bedroom at my grandma's house, but I didn't get to decorate it. She did. And it was like pink and fluffy, which is not my not my vibe. And so I thought, well, that would make a pretty dress. And I pulled the curtains down and with a stapler, I built it into a ball gown. And my mom and my grandma, slightly horrified and slightly proud, were like, OK, so we're going to take you to the fabric store. We're going to buy some fabric in a sewing machine and you're never going to touch the curtains again. <laughs> and here and you so are, yeah. And, you know, and the journey was there, right? Like I didn't, no one ever really taught. I mean, they taught me to use the basic sewing machine, like the very basic skills, right. but everything else I figured out as I went. So the, you know, it, it was a journey. I just, what was the first it. costume you made? Do you remember? It was such a part of my life. I can't remember. Like there was one specific thing. I know when I pulled the curtains down, I was trying to make. Uh, a dress I wanted I was in the ballet world I was always obsessed with the nutcracker at Christmas time mm -hmm. and I wanted to have Clara's big pink puffy party dress and that's what I was trying to make with the curtains <laughs> I remember that specifically um they used to keep a Christmas tree up for me in my room all year long so I could play nutcracker all year with my big puffy party dress on um so costumes were always a part of my life and making them was always something that was always a hobby. It's something I always did. And of course they got a little better as I got older and somewhere along the line, theater became something that I just, I enjoyed. It was a hobby. I went to college to be a teacher. I have a degree mm -hmm. in history and a teaching credential. And I realized that teaching kids was not for me. I didn't really like it. <laughs> and I thought, well, crud, now what do I do? I just spent five years in college to do this thing. And I, you know, now what? So I thought, well, let's make that thing that I like, the thing that I love, the thing that brings me joy. Let's make that my job. And I'd That's seen, the goal, right? Yeah. And I'd seen a backstage video. I don't remember what show it was. It might've been Wicked or something back then. I don't remember. And I, there was a woman who was putting a costume on someone and they were like, oh, this is my dresser, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, a dresser? What is that? And so I, the more I watched backstage videos, I realized who these people were. And I was like, that would be fun. Mm -hmm. And so it was always just kind of like this silly little dream job thing. I was like, oh, being a dresser on Broadway, that sounds like fun. 
And somewhere in that, just kind of falling in love with theater, of course, Phantom comes up, right? Because it's the such musical. a classic. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it was musically, I heard, I'm sure, I, I remember I had a Pandora. So it was long before we had like Spotify. And I had a Broadway Pandora station. And you would just get Phantom of the Opera songs or what have you. And, and then finally, I saw the production. Yeah. When's the first time you saw it? It was... The and was it on Broadway? Time, no, it was not. Well, I grew up in California, so Broadway was very not accessible to me. Um, I didn't until I was I was an adult the first time I because I was able to save my own money and get on a plane and fly to right. New York. Um, no, I saw the 25th anniversary. So oh. 10 years ago, that would be that was my first visual, like not just hearing it, but looking at it because there before that there wasn't. It didn't exist if you lived far away from New York. Was it a touring production? No, the like the recorded 25th anniversary production from Royal Albert Hall. You went to that? No, I watched it. Oh, okay. Like, gotcha. On a television. Okay. That was that, was that the makes first, sense. That was the first thing I saw because before that, if you couldn't get to New York, how would you ever see it? I was a poor kid. Yeah. So we didn't sure. have we didn't have options. So that was the the first experience I had with it visually. And I remember Ramin, watching, he's coming back. Uh he's gonna be doing an Italian non-replica yeah. production. So the costumes will be there. Oh, it's, not the a direction. it's a non-replica production. Um but yeah, I remember watching that and I just remember like I think everyone has a different feeling the first time they see Phantom, but I remember turning it off and I was it was the blue wishing dress. And I was like it's the sleeves on the blue wishing dress. I want to make those sleeves, right? Like everyone else is like oh, the Phantom right. and Christine and all this, this thing. And I'm like the sleeves on that dress. How do I make those sleeves, right? Like that was the thing that I, you know, people always say, oh, you love the show. And I'm like, yes, I love the show, but I love the costumes. That was the thing that got me. And I instantly was like, how do I make them? I want these costumes. And so, you know, yeah. and then of course, you know, figuring out who Marie Bjornsson was and I was going to say very much. A I mean, there they know. are. The beautiful, beautiful renderings. I have one. I have, a, I have one. that's oh, So good. And They're like beautiful. so close to the original designs too. They are gorgeous. And she just, she did such a wonderful just job. Yeah. So did, had, had you ever actually seen it live at uh, some yes. point before your? Yes. You know, so working. after I saw the, the 25th anniversary production and I was instantly obsessed and I was like, okay, this is something I need to see this thing mm -hmm. live. I need to see these costumes. And the first time I ever saw it was in London. I saw the West End production first before I saw oh, it on Broadway. Oh. I was, I lived in the UK for a while. And so I saw it in London and I remember I sat there and I, I remember the, the scene I saw was wonderful. The Phantom was wonderful, but good God, did I just sit there and stare at those costumes for two and a half hours. I remember just like seeing the masquerade dress under the lights and watching the sparkles and watching the way things moved. And it was oh, just, yeah. for me, it was just two and a half hours of staring at those costumes. And then after that, I saw it, you know, again, the next time I think I was in New York, I saw it on Broadway and I'd only seen it those two times again, because Broadway was far away. Uh, it wasn't mm. close by. Then I started working there and when I finished all 16 tracks, so I learned all of the wardrobe, I could do anything in the show. Um, they didn't have anything for me to do because I had finished the show and there was no one out that day. It's like you won the game. Yeah, like I literally won the game. And so my supervisor was like, you can go home. And I felt so weird. It was the second show of that day. And I was like, what do I, what do I do? And I had been wearing like a sweet 16 sash and I had balloons and a crown because there's 16 tracks. It was, it was being very silly about it, but I was so proud and everyone was giggling. It was just me being silly. I have a picture of me standing outside the theater with like six sweet 16 balloons. It was just madness. And I didn't know what to do. And I felt weird going home. And this was before closing was announced back when we had open seats. We don't have that anymore. Right. But yeah. I went to our stage manager and I was like, can I go watch the show? I was going to ask, do you ever get to actually see the show? Like now you're just behind it. Yeah. So and I was like, you know, I finished the show. They don't have anything else. And also, to like, do you want to hang out at work and like be at the same place that you're working all day? Even though it's like this magical experience. 
So I was very lucky that day. So for my sweet 16 celebration, as it were, they were like, go find a seat, go, go have a sit. And it was really wonderful to sit and watch it. Cause I hadn't for so long right. actually sat and watched the show. So I saw it that day and then I've seen it once since then. My mom came to see the show um, around Christmas time. And she was like, I want you to watch it with me. Like, it's no fun to watch, you know, to, to, you know, she knows I'm backstage. But so we sat and watched it together. Nice. At her first Broadway show. So I, you know, we sat together. And yeah, so I've seen it. I've only seen it on stage four times. And two it's of those like so since, bizarre, I, isn't it? since I've been working there. Yeah. 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 I was going to just to add to your staring at the costumes when you're watching the show. That's kind of what I was doing last time I saw it. Front row. It was like, you can really see the details. Oh my God, my favorite detail that I don't think I ever noticed was, I'm gonna, I don't know if, if, I think I learned the character's name, but I forget now. The husband in El Muto, his shoes are hilarious. Yes, Donatio. So there's actually, there's a story about the shoes. So our costume designer- Yes, tell me the story. Um. So. Obviously, Marie Bjornsson was the original costume designer who is no longer with us. Sam Fleming is our costume designer now. And one of Sam's things is shoe bows. And That's what I saw. I was like, I never noticed shoe, this shiny bow. Story. It's hilarious. Those bows are more intricate than people's wedding dresses. Like, those bows are so... And we switch them. Like, there is intentions. Who wears what bow? Like, there is so much thought. Like, Sam will be like, this person has to have these bows and that person gets these bows. Like... It's very intentional. So they're, the bows on Donatillo's shoes are the biggest in that scene because it's a household. So Donatillo would be at the top of the household. So he has the biggest bows on his shoes. And so if you go down, so like the jeweler has smaller bows and the hairdresser has the smallest because it, there's a ranking within the bows. And that's a historical thing that she's brought into it. But those bows are so incredibly detailed. Wow. The other so, thing I noticed, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And so the way it works is actually really fun. We have swings that cover multiple roles. And so they have snaps. And so we switch the bows depending on which character mm. they're going on for. So they'll be, you know, they'll be like, I need blah, blah, blahs, Donatillo bows. No, I need hairdresser bows. And you're tossing shoe bows because it is because it matters. That's the stuff that makes this show so beautiful and so wonderful. It's that little stuff that you yeah. think, oh, who cares what bows they have? No, that's the stuff that makes this show so beautiful and made it so iconic for so many years it's that yeah. little stuff it's those shoe bows it's on the Donna shoe bows. Shoes. yeah it's the little tiny stuff that you don't think is important but it is and there will never be another broadway show i don't think that is like this yeah my other favorite costume that i noticed this time around was um in masquerade there's a somebody there's a guy with uh, the jester i guess right mm -hmm. and those bells are those those are real like He's running around the stage and I can hear the ksh, 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 ksh. It's like, wow, yes. those movements have to be very intentional so it doesn't throw the 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 pit off. So the little band, so the jester, the drummer boy, the monkey. Um, that I love group, the monkey too. That's my favorite yeah. character in the show, the that monkey in Masquerade. They, oh, and Triangle Girl, I forgot her. She's in that, mm. that group as well. They their their the sounds that they're making are intentional yeah. they're not just like oh beat the thing like no they go on certain numbers they have evens and odds and like it's very intentional that you know we think oh they're just you know doing their thing they're not it's very intentionally planned so that they are with the orchestra and yeah. there is jingle bells like the jester has bells right. um and there's he was two, loud when he's you knew right in front of him oh my god yeah it's so there's cool. two sets of those bells and we used to keep a second one just in case you know, that one got misplaced and we sent him on once. And one of, one of our wonderful conductors, Kristen Blodgett, who is just the sweetest person ever and an amazing conductor. Uh, she heard those jingle bells from the spare set. And she was like, I don't ever want to hear those bells again because they were like so out of tune or something. I thought wow. sound was just horrid. And she was like, please don't make it. So she was like, please go back to the other bells. Speaking so yeah, of, it is this yeah. something you can hear. It's not just a prop. Speaking of bands within the show, this is another thing I noticed. I don't know if they, is this something they added or is something I just noticed for the first time was in, um, during Don Juan Triumphant, there were these two girls with like lutes. And the then they do boys. this like rock, oh, those are the page boys. Yeah. And 
they do this rock star back to back move in the front of the stage at one point. I'm like, I don't think I ever noticed this. Did they add that to the show? I can't. I don't and, know that. I don't know they're blocking. And can that, those can those loop question. girls put out a single? Like, I want to hear their band. Um, the page, the page boys, are, boys, they have a blast. They love those costumes and they're so much fun. Um, yeah. They have an absolute blast with them. I don't know they're they're blocking and stuff on stage. Right. That's totally an actor question. It, it could have things do. Sometimes things do change. You know, we have different people, different directors coming in different there's, you know, or somebody sees something that works or somebody tries something. It's great. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm imagine it is. They know, do this back to back movie. Like, you know, when people are playing guitars yeah, on stage, it, it was possible. like kiss, you know? Yeah. I mean, is it almost exactly the same show? It always has been sure, but little tiny things do yeah. shift and change and people find moments and stuff. So it's possible that it is newer, but that's right. an actual question. I, I don't actually know. <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I don't expect you to know all my stupid questions. I feel but, the uh, backstage, but when I, it comes I figured, to the on stage, I'm yeah. like, oh. Yeah, I just figured because you were saying like there's a whole band within the actors in Masquerade, and I was like, there's kind of another band in the yes. show too, and I wanted That's to, I wanted to give them some credit, and they gotta give themselves a band name. So, I'll, I'll let them know. Yes, that's the homework for tonight, I it's guess. Usually, <laughs> if it's the two that it's their track, if an uh, understudy or split yeah. is on it. Kanisha Feliciano is one of our page boys, and Elizabeth Welch is the other one. So those okay. are there. But there are other page boys. I want to I hear the band name that they come oh, up I, with they for will that be band. I, I, draw, I do a little change with them when I'm in the Carlotta track. I have a little moment with them earlier in the show, so I will let them know. And I'll oh, I do want to definitely on. get into Phantom Con, but before yes. that... Okay. Uh, let me do the thesis of the show. I guess I'll ask you first, have you found any phantoms in the wild recently that you're just like, oh, shit? Well, my wild is a lot more phantomy than I would say right. normal people's worlds are. I do I do run into them quite frequently yeah, in yeah. my place of work. Um, but my world is kind of phantom. So I don't, I can't say that I, I, I run into them in the wild, but for me, my wild is Phantom of the Opera, right? Like that's that's where I go to work. That's what I yeah. see every day. And my home time when I'm not at work, I'm probably working on a costume that is a Phantom costume. You know, So right. for me, I, it is a part of my everyday life. So it's it's harder to find them in the wild. But the thing I do love to find in the wild is fans. It's always mm -hmm. good fun when I see a phantom sweatshirt out in the wild right. yeah, or cool. I, you know, you see the people that love the show. Or I really enjoy getting on the train and seeing playbills and seeing those phantom playbills in people's hands. I'm like, ha you just saw the show. Nice. <laughs> so I, those are the little moments that are so fun is, you know, we leave, like most of us do leave right when the audience does. A lot of us walk out with the audience. So I'm sitting next to you on the train holding that playbill. And I love yeah. hearing conversations it's always really fun when I'm when I hear the conversation about the show that they just watched and I get to overhear, you know, I try not to eavesdrop, but if it's about Phantom, I will. And it's right. really, it's really fun to have those moments when you see like, oh, yeah, we forget we do our world backstage, but out in the wild, out in the universe, there is conversations about Phantom of the Opera happening. And that's fun. Yeah, that was kind of like a, a fun mental thing about I used to live in Astoria for like 15 years, so I would take the train i wouldn't get out at times square every day but i would probably pass it at least four times a day and i'm like i'm probably in the car with some people working on broadway you know right now oh and that's so cool if you are leaving a broadway show i guarantee one person in that car was either backstage on stage in yeah. the orchestra in the crew like i guarantee and i see people from other shows and i, I recognize that you know we're all leaving around the same time. So when you are on the train and you're holding a playbill and you're talking about that show, it's possible one of us is sitting there. You never yeah. know. And those actors get out really fast. And I um, used to ride the train home with one of the performers. We lived near each other. And one day we were running out and there was a woman that was like, I wonder how long it takes for the actors to come out. And I giggled a little because I was we were literally walking out with these people. So even if you don't realize it, they might be right there. And that's part of the fun of it. It's kind mm -hmm. of the secret world 
where you know they it's like superman taking his glasses off yeah you can hardly recognize them without the wigs the makeup like it's a whole different person unless Um, you see them right up close raquel always jokes because raquel is blonde right i saw that it is not a blonde and so she says that um Every in your in Q while, and A the other day, I was like, "Who is this person?" Yeah, well, every once in a while, she she said that in the Q and A as well. She was like, "So people think I'm Meg because they see blonde and right, they just, right. oh, you're, you must be Meg, you know." That's funny. Uh, so it, it always it always makes me laugh because they do they look different and you know you don't realize how fast they become normal people again. They gotta shed their superhero and are suddenly you know ready to go back to their lives. So it's always fun. It's a little secret. <laughs> Rory, do you like scary movies? Oh, I love scary movies. I'm a, I was born on Halloween. What? And I'm, I'm a 90s goth kid at heart. So my life is like hoping to be a scary movie. My dream is to like the TV show Ghosts where she like moves into a house full of ghosts. I'm like, it's my dream. Hmm. Like find me a haunted house, please. Well, I went to see a scary movie this week and I was really hoping to find a phantom. And I'm a little <laughs> disappointed that I didn't. Hmm. And that movie was Scream 6. Scream. Of course, like right in the advertisement, it's like Times Square, you know. Right. It's so easy to like get a phantom in there. Or, but so I was very disappointed. I thought I was going to see a phantom. You know, it's set on Halloween night, and at least someone would be in a costume or something in the background. Or even just like the, like, because it's Times Square, like one of right. the advertisements could have very easily been well, Phantom of the Opera. The only spoiler I'll say is they don't go to Times Square at all. So. <laughs> It's like what the hell? marketing and advertising department. But credit to my brother Keith found a phantom for me within the Scream universe. So I want to point that out and see, did you know about this? So everyone has a theater background. Tell us a little bit about how you got started and your childhood growing up, uh, theater and, and performance. Just the little things. The little things, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I started out as a dancer, actually. I started when I was six. Um, and then got into the National Ballet School when I was nine and was really was training as to become a professional dancer. And my first job was Phantom of the Opera, which I got when I was 14. And um, <clears throat> thank you. And that was a really amazing experience and that, that um, an agent saw me in that and asked me if I wanted to act. And I sort of slid into acting from dancing because I'd had a lot of injuries and stuff, so. So Dev Campbell came into her acting career because of Phantom of the Opera. She was in the original cast in Toronto at the Pentagis, along with uh, Colm Wilkinson, uh, did I say his name right? Wilkinson and Rebecca Kane, yeah. There she is, 14 years old. And I imagine she's right in here somewhere. Little band, yeah, Yeah. ballerinas are back there. This is, um, I guess, promo footage from the original Toronto production so yeah yeah there's a there's a Nev Campbell from Scream in here How fun. and that's that's my found a phantom for this week Th- that's a good one and it's fun to find right? ballerina that's, I like that's... I like to keep it relevant you know sure right well I think it's a fun way to remember that Phantom of the Opera is theater Right, like Phantom of the Opera's been theater for so long that these people that, right, that these are people that are in film now, but their career was still based in something that was so classically yeah. musical theater, right? Like it came from Phantom of the Opera, which was a big part of so many people's theater journey, whether it was just seeing it or hearing it or being in it, right? Phantom of the Opera is the basis for theater for so many people. Incredible, right? Yeah, really is. Here's a question from the chat. Here's my oh. brother, actually. Costume wise, I mean, I think I know the answer to this. Uh, let's see if you do. Let's see. Why does all the marketing feature a full phantom mask, but the costume is a half mask? Yes. Um, I mean, I know the answer. I think it's actually kind of become phantom lore at this point, the answer. So the original design of the mask was a full mask, but it made having emotions and acting nearly <laughs> impossible. So the the kind of iconic half mask came a little bit later, but the marketing already existed. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of silly now we kind of giggle because all of the marketing is this full mask yeah. and the rose we have a joke about the rose too. to this day yeah yeah where's what... the rose there's no rose 
so um, I won't say the actor's name just in case they, I, I, even though I don't think that they would have a problem with me telling this story. Mm -hmm. um, so every once in a while, when you do the show eight times a week, something silly comes out of your mouth that isn't what you meant it to be. And it's just human error. And when it happens, everybody laughs and we all move on. And usually it's so fast, the audience barely notices. Um, but I had an actor that accidentally was saying a line and it came out as the rose that never grew. Like it was the nose, right? Like yeah. the nose line, mm -hmm. but it was the rose. And the actor was like, what? Like, where did that come from? And I'm like, maybe it's the rose, the rose that no one knows about. Like, where did, we don't know where the rose came from. There's no rose props anywhere. Right. There is That's no clever. red roses in that theater. Unless someone received flowers from their significant other, there's no roses in that theater. So where did this rose come from? And so when this actor said the rose that never grew, I'm like, yes, the rose. If I'm wondering where that rose was. So we all giggle about that because we don't understand the rose either. Because we don't, we don't know why. But yes, the mask was originally supposed to be a full mask, but it was just impossible to act. And then we got this amazing, iconic half mask out of it, which is so incredibly iconic now. Yeah, now it's so funny to see what, like, because I I'm into Phantom, the whole thing, like the whole right. history, the book, the movies, and yeah. everything. And until this iteration, it was always a full mask, like yeah, just no certainly. question. And now you can see who rips off who by the way they design their characters. It's kind oh, of funny. Absolutely, um, but yeah, it is it is the half mask, which is just so so fantastic and one of the thing i i always giggle when i'm dressing the, the phantoms and th them trying to use the face id on their phone with their mask on <laughs> does it work with the even the makeup um usually no <laughs> usually oh, no but boy. every once in a while like if they get the angle just right it'll work and they're like yes it works <laughs> better change it to a, a thumbnail a thumb yeah print. so it, it always makes me laugh they're trying to do their phone why doesn't it work and they're like oh crap i'm wearing a mask you know <laughs> they forget that oh, they have man. all this stuff and then it doesn't work it's funny <laughs> see that's something they couldn't have thought about when they originally designed this either no right they had no idea that what even what like phones and social media were going to be right. the, the world has changed so completely since oh the 80s. that's another thing that i love about the majestic theater is i thought there was no more pay phones left in new york city and i found one <laughs> in the majestic theater i don't know if it's still operational but it's there the majestic theater is a lovely little time capsule back to the 1980s even stuff we have drop cloths that we use when we, if we are going to put costumes on the ground and they are all bed sheets mm. all of our drop cloths are bed sheets and they're like these obnoxious rose covered like they look like 1980s bed sheets that I'm sure someone brought in and they became the drop cloths that we're still using 35 wow. years later. So it's just this lovely little like 1980s time capsule that has not been updated and it's pretty funny. That's kind of why we love it though. Right, like, you know, the show wouldn't have been the same if it was created no, today. No, it's you know, such it's, an it's, 80s creation. It is. But you that's know, what just smoke it. and like, you know, I kind of wish there was a version that went, you know, you ever see the original video with um, Sarah Brightman and the original Phantom that was supposed to be before Michael Crawford, the music oh, yes. video. Yes. Before the there was a musical. I want to see that version where it's just like full on 80s, like no, for no reason whatsoever. Like, why is there a guitar solo in there? You know, I don't know, because it was the 80s yeah. and like that pumping synth, like that's so 80. Anyways, well, 80s I want to see that. Resurgence recently, I feel like it's a lot of TV right. shows and stuff now. Yeah. Like, set the 80s, the so Stranger like Things theme sounds like dun, 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 or what, you know, it's yeah, the same absolutely. kind of thing. We, there's a lot of Stranger Things happening backstage. When I that new season comes out, we don't function. Like the, when video, the last, yeah. when the last great, one though. came out, we did not function backstage. There was a lot of watching it in between cues and like, hold on, hold on, hold on. We oh, and Gaten's on Broadway now, stuff. isn't he? Um, yes, I believe so. Somebody mentioned him that they met him the other Maybe, day. Maybe really uh, is he in Sweeney Todd now? Sweeney Todd. I forget. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's we cool. had a couple phantom people go to Sweeney Todd, mm. and so we're you know so J very fun. Jumping ship just, early. Yeah, well, okay. I mean for Sweeney. <laughs> yeah, wait. yeah, yeah. Such a great gig. There should always be a guitar solo. Yeah, if you're in the chat, get your questions in now. I think it's time to talk about Phantom Con. I see your your t-shirt there. Yes, my Empowered Voices t-shirt. So I'm going to give you a little background on what it is. So Empowered Voices was created 
as a way for people that wanted to have vocal lessons and get to work with some of Broadway's best, but also with a very psychological approach, right? We're talking not just about having a great voice, but how do we take care of ourselves? And so they do really wonderful programs. There's master classes with a bunch of different cast members from Phantom of the Opera and all over Broadway. And this whole thing kind of began with Raquel, who is obviously, you know, for those of us in the Phantom world, Ooh, is the our, lovely, part of this too. our lovely Carlotta. Yeah, they have so many different people that have taught master classes over the years. Look at oh, this list man. of people. Yeah. Allie, it's, I saw Allie. <laughs> Um, I saw it's Kaylee Ann. An amazing list of people. Holly. And Holly Baird is uh, works with Raquel and they really Lairs. do this together. And they they've created such a wonderful environment, this safe experience where people can get audition practice and singing practice and dancing practice, but also really be focused on how do we be full, well-rounded performers that are healthy and happy people as well as strong in our craft which is so awesome. And they they do summer intensives, but then they came up with this really cool idea. And it was, how do we say goodbye to Phantom of the Opera? And so kind of using the, the platform that they'd started for their vocal lessons was to create what I call Phantom Con, but is officially mm. called our fa Fantasy Farewell Weekend. All with P's, by the way. Yes, all with P's, here. all with P's. I told you, we don't use, we don't use the letter yeah. F, um, only P-H. And they came up with this wonderful idea and Raquel and Polly are doing this incredible thing, which is bringing together not just fans, but performers and letting everyone have one last kind of fan filled farewell. I got all my PHs in there and <laughs> it really is Phantom Con. And so I've been joking that it's Phantom Con because it's Phantom Con. It includes questions and answers with your cast members, lunch with cast members, the performances. I cannot say enough about this idea that you can perform with a cast member. I just, yeah, I that sounds really cool. But I can imagine people just loving that in her lineup. This, like, this lineup of people that is that is going to be a part of this is just spectacular. And can you announce the lineup or is it a secret? It's listed. So, um, okay. If yeah. you go to the website, you can see everyone that's involved, but it's the final cast of Phantom of the Opera. There's so many people that are involved. And I think we were counting the other day. We have one of, we have Rowls and Christine's and Phantoms and we have just everyone. And so it's really going to be awesome. The way it works is there's going to be some master classes interspersed in there. So you have, um, performing master classes. If that's for you, we have backstage stuff. I'm going to do, what's it like to be a dresser? I'm going to do kind of a costume cosplay situation, but then also this one's really cool. There's going to be a lesson with our production makeup supervisor and she's going to do the makeup on some people. So she's going to do, um, I don't know what she's decided. There was a Donatillo. There was a Donatillo maybe yeah. here, Christine makeup. She can't do full phantom makeup, of course, because there's still right. some magic. But she like talking about maybe bald caps. She said she could maybe bring some things for us to touch and feel like this is the coolest stuff. There's going to be hair classes where they're going to teach pin curls, wigs, all that fun stuff. There are so many people involved in this. And it's really the coolest thing if you are a fan of Phantom of the Opera and you want to be a part of this for one last time. It is the coolest weekend. We're also going to go to the Museum of Broadway, which is going to be really fun. I really need so to get there. I haven't been there yet. So we can see some costumes up close. Yeah. Of course, we can't bring you costumes that are currently in the show. But if we go to the Museum of Broadway, we get to see costumes and we can talk about, you know, why they're made the way they are, why they look that way, kind of the history of why they were designed the way they were. So we get to do a lot of the fun fan stuff that we actually have the opportunity to talk about for the whole weekend. Yeah, I want to go there and see that red death. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Those costumes are... Oh insanely gorgeous considering they're on stage for like a grand total of 30 seconds right i know and twice for that one it's the guy running down the stairs at the end too you mean the magic the magic that's what i mean i mean the phantom coming in a loop <laughs> um yes that cost those costumes are incredibly gorgeous and actually my favorite is the guy who hides him with his cape 
the reveal the reveal we call him the reveal oh that's a good one i like that the reveal cape yeah um i always call him the pride character because he has this like rainbow cape and he wears yeah. like a sparkly rhinestone encrusted totally. bow tie and i'm like pride hello um but yeah so if if anyone's out are there slots in, left for phantom con yes there is only two in-person slots left so if you're interested you have Get the on it now. to be in person we do have i think last time i checked eight virtual spots left. So if you live far away or you can't get to New York or maybe financially, the virtual option is just a little bit more for you. That's an option as well. And pretty much everything is included except for the, like going to the museum, you can't do There is, a, and there's a list on the Empowered Voices Instagram that shows what you get with the virtual option, but it's pretty much everything. And just some fun stuff that we're doing, um, Polly and Raquel have organized signed cast posters from the entire right. the entire final cast. It's not something that everyone can oh, get. Oh, and they get swag bag, I hear. Yes, there's going to be a swag bag. So you're going to get some fun swag. Um, we were just talking about that the other day. And so I think you're going to be really pleased with what comes in that. But lots of fun things and just personal one-on-one -on -one time with these cast members, which I think is kind of priceless in and of itself. The opportunity to ask them, what's your favorite phantom memory? Or what's that time that you messed up on stage? Or what was your favorite oops memory? Or just all these different things. And they're going to be just as excited to share this final bit of the journey because we're all excited and sad, kind of all rolled into yeah. one. Yeah, that was going to be one of my questions was... When you heard the news that it was closing, what was the vibe like at the next show? It was really hard. We were very sad. It was a lot to take in. I would say it took us a couple of weeks before we really all processed it. And now everyone's excited. I mean, we're sad, right. of course, but people are moving on to other things and we're kind of, okay, it's the end of high school. We, all, we keep yeah. joking. Everyone's joking that it's the end of high school. So we're sad and excited at the same time. And you think it's firing like their performances at the at the moment too? I think there's a lot of there's a lot of lasts happening. And I think Right, I keep seeing that. Almost every day it's like it's a last And of course we can't <sighs> ever guarantee because things happen, understudies go right. on, but there's something really magical about people saying goodbye to something that they've loved so much and it's not just sad it is happy in a way because they're thankful for the experiences and there's some tears but there's happiness and i'm sure it's going to continue to be that way for the next 40 shows there's going to be highs and lows to it but hopefully it's going to force us all to you know pursue different things and get excited about new projects and i think that is going to be the blessing of the whole thing is are you kind of excited life. about the last night i mean if, even though it's going to be bittersweet it's going to be like a really special night i'm sure it's going to be interesting it's yeah. going to be interesting that's a good it's, word it's going to be a mix of wow, they we're watching something for the first time, watching Phantom of the Opera's last performance, right? That is a first in and of itself and a last. So it's going to be a mix of, wow, this is so cool. And I, I, the energy in that room, I can only imagine oh, what I'm... it's going to be like. And it's an invitation only performance. Yeah. So it's going to be an incredible group of family, friends, special invitee guests. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> But it's also going to be heartbreaking. We're going to be sad. So it's going to be all of the above. <laughs> Will you get to take a costume or set piece after the final show? No, actually, they've been very clear for for the performers and everyone else. Everything's going back into stock because we have yeah. so many productions of Phantom of the Opera going on around the world. This stuff is going to get used again. It's not over. I mean, it's over. This is over. Right. But there's no. tours. Phantom's there's always starting up. Yeah. There's yeah. So everything goes into storage. Nothing. I mean, even the performers, they were very clear. None of this stuff is yours. Of course. <laughs> Yeah, I think that uh, was more of a sarcastic ones. question, but yeah, um, but you know, it is it is a valid question because people yeah, are asking sure. that, like, oh, where are all the costumes going to go, and where are the sets going to go to the TV go? show? Hello, for the TV show that you're starting, but yes. yeah, so that stuff is going to go into storage, and it will, I'm sure, get used again because Phantom reuses things as much as we can because those of costumes course. are so beautiful. Why wouldn't I you? know I, they can't go to waste? They got to be somewhere. Um, 
Well, I know we're at about an hour. Do you have a few more minutes to do some rapid fire, maybe? Yeah, let's do some questions. I let's do have see. To get let's see what I missed. Let's yes, because we ne we need to make sure Carlotta gets dressed tonight. So yes, well, she has to put clothes on. That's yeah. important. Well, let me. Uh, I have some more of your fun social media videos that I maybe we could Hi, play. Fish. Hi. What is happening here? Ayaka. So um, I, I'm with Ayaka in that video. Ayaka is one of our ballerinas. She came from the world tour to be in our production. Um, maybe last year. She might have, she's been around for a year. And she took over the goldfish track. So the ballerina tracks are named by their masquerade character. Hmm. And goldfish is my favorite masquerade character. So last year. It's so Maybe fun. spring, early summer, I started saying, hey, I want to make the goldfish for Halloween. Because I start my Halloween costumes very early. And I kind of asked her, like, does that creep you out? November like, 1st. <laughs> yeah, she was like, this is going to be so cool. And so, so I was wondering, I that was a costume you made that you were wearing? Yeah. So, yeah, I so I started building it in June, I think. It took quite a long time. I started building the goldfish and I would show her progress pictures as we went and everybody was all invested in Rory's goldfish. And <laughs> I I wear all black every single day. And I said, the one day I will show up in a costume, I'll Hilarious. wear color is on Halloween and it's my birthday. So I get very excited. So I said, I'm gonna be the goldfish and everyone was prepared. And so me and Ayaka planned to come in a little early and I put her in, actually dressed her as the goldfish, dressing the goldfish before the show. And so we could take some pictures and hang out as two goldfish together. <laughs> and I tried very band. hard not to. Yes, exactly. And so and Greg Mills came and took some pictures for us. It was very fun. And I tried very hard not to go look at her costume. I try to only use photos when I recreate things to the best of say, my now, ability. Now that you work there, are you taking notes for your own costumes? I try not to. The last Christine costume I had to make was the wedding dress, which I finished a couple of weeks ago. And I tried so hard not to say the wedding dress wasn't done yet there. Yeah, I try so hard not to study them, which is an interesting combination when mm. you're like trying to make sure everything's repaired and everything looks gorgeous but like, like not i would totally horizon. believe that these were the real thing maybe i'm not i don't have as much attention to detail but <laughs> and mine have their own some of them are based on the west end costumes some of them are based on new york costumes some of them are just kind of my own interpretation you know they're not they're not all identical but sometimes i just decide hey i'm gonna do my own thing you know it's, it's just a hobby so i can do whatever i want which is fun oh my goldfish tail there i had a is. lot of fun wiggling my tail when i was in that costume i mean how could you not i mean that's and, and when you go to a costume party like that there's gonna be a real niche group of people who understand what that is it was fun though on this i rode the subway into work that day and of course was fully dressed oh, and everyone wow. knew i was a goldfish right like people didn't know it was from phantom of the opera sure, but exactly. everyone was like oh you're a goldfish and so they understood what i was so that was that was really fun Let me but see. yeah What's i had this one yes. oh my gosh what are you doing oh. i'm working it doesn't look like you're see working. this is a scene from that sure. tv show right here this is the pitch just show them this <laughs> that's the pitch that's the pitch yes. right there that's the vibe I made that video with one of my favorite backstage people. Her name is Lauren, and she's one of the swings for our the makeup team. And I somehow it always worked out. We'd always end up on the Phantom track on the same day. And so we totally bonded and became friends. And I was like, do you want to make a video with me? And she was like, yes. And so I was sitting there, and I was presetting the Red Death stuff. And... I don't remember how we came up with this idea, but that was that was what we were doing. <laughs> so Amazing. she are you working? Doesn't look like you're working. Oh, oh the Carlotta. I'm gonna turn the turn the music on off so I don't get in trouble, but <laughs> it's since you've been gone. Yes, it was since you've been gone. Oh, Alexa. Oh, yeah. That was one of my rapid fire questions. Are you gonna miss hey Alexa? Well, um, Raquel bought me an Alexa for Christmas, so oh, I have one so now. now it's, so it's been passed on to so you. Long. Yeah, Tristan, Like, I was wondering if Tristan you have nightmares on. of her, you know, talking to Alexa. <laughs> Alexa is my nightmares now. Yeah. 
We had so much fun doing that one. That was that's uh, in that video was like, on one of our other Carlotta covers. Look at us. This is the last one I got. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> My pink wig. Things that Aww. I want more than anything else in the entire world. I mean, sometimes I, I just I imagine I have this this one this one daydream that's just I know I know it's crazy. I love it though. That's what I love about it so much. This is what I'm talking so about. Dramatic. The backstage Broadway, Just like, I should have played this one at the beginning. I like to imagine Carlotta carrying her own dresses up the stairs. Yeah, those things look real heavy. I know you've talked about this before. Oh, they are. And this one is one of my least favorite carries of the entire show. I bet. And she really did it. Bless oh, her soul. Jeez. It, that one sucks. Because you're carrying... There's a lot of stairs. Oh, yes. That's like the worst part. So she's up like four flights. Um, so <laughs> you're carrying the skirt and a laundry basket and an umbrella. You only have two hands. So you have to like care. It, it's so hard. And then you're like going up the stairs. And so that one's like one of the hardest ones. And so that's what she was like, I want to know how it feels. And I'm like, okay, but I get to record you doing it because we need proof that you actually did this. All right. Let's see what uh, we got here. What did I miss? Does, is Love Never Dies ever coming to Broadway? Um, I, I don't know. I, 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 I hope it comes yet. to Coney Island. I think they should do it over there. Where oh, it's that's fun. Cool yeah, I love here. Love Never Dies, as you guys absolutely know. It's my favorite show of all time. But Really? Love Never Dies? I love Love Never Dies. The original production is my favorite. The London production I thought was just absolutely stunning. But we'll have to we'll have to have you back and talk about that sometime. <laughs> favorite non-phantom show. Oh, hmm. I'm looking around my sewing room right now for inspiration and ideas. Yeah, do you People cosplay from other shows as well? Oh, yes. People don't realize that. They're like, oh, you only have Phantom. I'm like, no, Instagram yeah. algorithm just only likes Phantom. I have so many other things. I always say that if I could, if I could sing, that my Broadway dream role would be Gigi. I love Gigi, both the original film and I liked the, the revival. Uh, it's a learner and low show that most people don't recognize. But I love Gigi. And I love like waitress. I really like waitress. That's another favorite of mine. Awesome. I love any, the any other last is. minute questions from the chat. Get them in now. Um, do you have a favorite oh. phantom? As like a human <laughs> or version of of phantom? Oh. Or how about oh. non non musical version of phantom? Do you do you have any connection to mm -hmm. any other ones? I like the Lon Chaney Phantom. I think there's something about the like classic horror Phantom because I'm a total horror kid. So yeah. I, I like that. I'm, I like working, when... I'm working through this right now, which is a history of the original of the of the opera. with a full shooting script of nice. the original before it was mangled into five different versions. Right. Well, and that's and I really enjoy the novel. I like the novel a lot. I've read it a couple of times. So I like the kind of the history of it. I like that there's more to the story than just any one particular thing. But mm -hmm. do you think most I actors know. in the show have read the novel? <laughs> I think I think a lot of them have. Uh, some of them are more like the book is really important to them. And that's like mm -hmm. how they base their character. And mm -hmm. others are just it's a fun thing because it's part of the show. Right. But I have questions that I that I've asked all of my phantoms like the same question to see if they have the same answer. And some of them are like, well, the answer's in the book. And so that means that to them, What's that's the question? answer. Um, the joke is whenever, when I'm putting on, the cape is actually a process, the big black cape with all the, and my joke is always who bedazzled the cape? Like, does the <laughs> phantom sit there and like, sew the rhinestones and the sparkles on, or does someone do it for him? And some of them are like, he did it himself. Like he bedazzled the cape. And then other ones are like, um, he has a bunch of money and he goes out at night and he pays people to do things for it, right? Like, I think he steals have, them from other productions. Right. Everyone has a very specific idea of what, where this stuff comes from. And some people's answer is like, well, in the book, this is what happens. I mean, and then da, 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 da. Like, they like cite their sources and others I'd just say, decide. I'd say his you closet know? is the entire cellar of the opera. So it's got all the costumes from right? all their productions. He's just picking and choosing 
probably puts him back. I think he sits down there with like a hot glue gun and a needle and thread. And he's... Yeah, I like that too. <laughs> Have you seen Bad Cinderella? Although in the book, I don't think he ever has a cape. So that's that's a difference. Right. Um, yeah, the cape whatever. is so fantastic though on stage. I know you have look I, I at have, this theater every time you leave the theater, so. I have not seen it yet, though, but me and Raquel were talking about how much we want to see it. So it I is very much it. on the list of something we want to see. Some people have seen it, and so then they talk about it, and we're like, okay, we need to go see this. Mm. Um, I'm very obsessed with the title song, is like there the a, Bad is there Cinderella a buzz, song. Is there a buzz around this on Broadway, Bad Cinderella? Has it started I, yet? Seen, I don't. They they opened, but I think they might still be in previews. I'm not okay. sure if they've opened opened, but everyone's talking. I mean, like yeah. it's like, every day someone's coming in, like oh, I saw Bad Cinderella. Nice. So I'm really excited. I just love the like the title song. Do you Bad know anyone Cinderella. in that show? Um, working at that I don't show, I know the only person they, that Kristen Blodgett was over there. She's one of our conductors that she's been over there, but she's the only person that I know of that's over there. I don't I don't really know anyone in that cast. No one from Phantom. Right. Do you like the Robert England Phantom? Have you seen that one? Yes. Um, it's not, I wouldn't say it's my favorite ever, but it's not like my least favorite. It's like a solid in the middle of my Phantom favorites. <laughs> nice. Well, I think we, oh wait, I wanted to show this picture because I think this was your first night doing the show, right? Yeah. So I actually stopped a random person on the street. I mean, they had just seen the show and they were taking pictures and I'm like, hi, mm -hmm. would you take my picture? That was the first time. So we count the first time we actually did our track. So I didn't, that wasn't my first day at the show. It was my third day, which would have been the first time I ran the Pionji track by and, myself. And I absolutely love this picture. I just want to showcase this again. Photo taken by Raquel. Um, mm, I nice. hand her that head at the top of every show. And I always yep. joke, <laughs> emphasis on joke, that if I, if we were given, like, everybody can take one thing from the show, like, if that was a thing, that I yeah. want the severed head, because I'm creepy and I want to, like, hang it in my house. So I always joke that that's my favorite thing in the show. And whenever I hand it to them, I always say, this is your dead friend. And it's just funny. And so I was, like, holding it and cradling it. And she was like, oh, my God. And so she took the picture. And it ended up being a fantastic picture. So it's now one of my favorites. Yeah, I love it. Um, well, let me tell you what's happening on the show coming up because we got some yes. cool stuff coming up. The next episode is going to be April Phantom Friday, April 7th. We're going back to book club. We see, on, I do episodes on this show where we deep dive into each chapter of the book. And so, this one is going to be with Christine Townsend, who is a self proclaimed Phantom of the Opera historian and collector. And she can tell us all about all the different English translations of the original novel. So we'll go, go into some really nerdy details in this one. And then, have you ever played the video game Return of the Phantom? I don't do video games. This was from like the mid-90s. It was a PC game. Wait, look, I have my original diskettes yes! here of Return ah, of the Phantom. Childhood. Okay, and... <laughs> Me and um, our favorite, one of my favorite guests here, Becky Laugh, who, ah, who made this Phantom of the Opera comic book yes. recently. Well, this is just I book one. I love seeing those on Instagram. I follow yeah. that because I love when the new ones pop up. She is going to be, she has never played this game before. So we are going to do a complete playthrough of the game live here on Saturday, April 15th, in preparation for... I was gonna say April fifteenth. Oh my gosh! Oh shit! 16th, that's the last night, isn't it? April sixteenth is our last night. Okay, so, so it'll be the eve of the last. Well, or so the fifteenth is the last performance that anyone can purchase tickets so to. So watch my show, and then go haunt the Majestic Theater, and then come back the next day, Monday. Wait, is the last show on a Sunday? Right. Yes, the last so show is a Sunday. If you're having your Phantom Blues on Monday. Come join me. I will be interviewing the writer and designer of the game, Return of the Phantom, Raymond Benson, who is actually most famous for being the only American writer officially hired to write the James Bond book series in the 90s. So this is going to be a really interesting conversation. Um, and he also says he's a film historian, so... Join us here on Found a Phantom. Is there anything that I missed that you want to add about the show? Any thoughts, 
I don't know. What's the last goofy thing that you remember happening backstage? Oh my gosh. Um, I, I do have fun behind the bed if if Raquel is eating a cough drop and it, it falls on the ground and it's out further from the side of the bed than I can like crawl out there. So I use the back of her umbrella because it's black so you can't oh. see it and I can like pull the cough drop. And that always makes me laugh that I'm like, yep, yeah, this is my job. That's your is job. Using an umbrella to fish a cough drop off the stage so no oh, one can see it. Alexandra, my new best friend, England is such a nice guy. Did you meet him? That's awesome. We'll talk later. Uh, I don't think you can do a complete playthrough in one night. I've seen it done in two hours. So we are blocking out about four hours just to make sure. But I will have a guide. And the fun thing is, she's never played it before. So she's going in fresh and then I'll kind of like nudge her in the right direction while we bullshit about it. So okay. thank you so much. I don't want you to be late for dressing Carlotta. You got to get the show on the road, you know, eight shows a week. Doesn't stop for anybody. No, it doesn't. But yes, if you guys are interested in Phantom Con, you're welcome to ask me yes. questions on Instagram. I'm totally happy to answer I got all the <laughs> stuff in the scroll here too. Yeah. EmpoweredVoicesNow.com yeah. at Coney Island Designs. That's you. Yeah. Yes. Empowered Voices Now at, uh, on Instagram, I'm sure too, right? Yes, All the exactly. things. Ask those questions. I'm always happy to answer them if you want to know more about it. But there's only two spots left. Get it so now. So if you want to be there in person, and we have the virtual, but if you want to be there in person, there's only two spots left. But we're so excited. It's going to be so much fun. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Um, of course. You know, have fun doing the phantom of the opera again tonight 40 40 more 40 times more times Oof. I know, it's, it's bittersweet crazy. it's bittersweet and i'm just a it fan is. you know it is for everyone right like in a, in a way it's the end of something and that's always it is. hard it's just something that i always thought would be there for me especially living in new york for as long as i have it was just always there it was like my friendly neighborhood phantom yeah but remember oh, wow. we, we all have to remember this that when the show goes away, we don't have to stop liking it. I think that's something that's really important that I keep reminding myself. I'm like, oh, wait, I can still love it because it's not ever and going Trust me, us. I got a closet full of things to love and hate about Phantom. It's fun to hate. It's fun to hate some of these things, too, because of how, fun, you know, just wacky it gets. Sure. Well, thank you so much. It was so much fun to talk to you guys. If you guys have other questions that you think of later, anyone who's watching or watches it later, you're welcome to throw me a message on Instagram and I'll see if I can answer your question. And everyone go out there and find a phantom. Found a phantom. Found a phantom.